You know, when my when my shirts come back from the dry cleaners, they they I think they want you to know that they're clean. You know, not that you can't tell by looking at them. Usually you can, but you know, they put all these clips in them. I'm holding one up now. Like, see this little clip? They put all these clips and they put this cardboard thing in in, in the collar and they put it in a plastic bag and you have to go through all these steps to unlock your shirt from the thing take the plastic off take the cardboard thing out of the collar you got to take these clips off which they put in strategic places strategic for them and uh, they're also um um there's what they got the collar you got the clips you got the plastic and uh, there's there oh yeah and they button like three buttons it's like just I just give me my shirt please you remember those when you buy those uh, fancy shirts like dress shirts and they're in the package and I don't buy too many of those but you open up and there are pins everywhere you know and some people it's their job to put pins you put one pin here one pin there one pin goes through the sleeve and the back one pin goes through the back and the sleeve and the collar one pin goes here and like these people they have to sit through courses I think they have to be trained and practice on practice shirts that are to put these pins in the right places and i can't imagine you can pin these shirts without injuring yourself my point in in all this is that come on we are so short in time on this earth and i am so in this mode and i have been for years it's like let's just get the serve the basics in life forget all the niceties forget the plastic clips um and let's just just give me my shirt i don't have time um, put the shirt in a bag and sell it to me. Just put it in a bag, roll it up, throw it in there. I don't care. And so these things in life that take up all our time, Paul would look at us and say, what are you people doing? You're putting clips on shirts. No, no, there's no time for this. And I feel like I am personally in a 911 situation telling you these things, not me personally. What I meant was that my job to announce the evangel, we are in the days of Noah, going to talk about that today with the rainbow that surrounds the throne of God. If you can believe that, I'm going to read it from John. We have this throne that looks to John like Jasper stone and carnelian, which are hard vibrantly colored stones that you put them together purple and red you get a fire and now surrounding the throne is a rainbow this is interesting is god uh making a statement concerning the gay community here it could be but i don't think so i think it goes back to genesis chapter 9 after the flood i think that's far more likely than god is um catering to the homosexual contingent he could be i'm not saying he's not uh but it certainly um yeah, it could be in play here so um we don't have time folks for the niceties that we always used to have to make everything just right and to and to and to fluff our pillows and to um you know all these details like martha and mary martha was in a fuss about so many things right she wanted everything just right she put those frilly toothpicks in jesus's reuben sandwich and that's when jesus rolled his eyes and said oh, are you kidding me well yeah yeah this is what happened everything was fine until martha asked mary to help her jesus wasn't going to say anything and then martha starts criticizing mary who wasn't concerned about the frilly toothpicks or that the pickles were sliced and presented in a decorative fashion it's like let's just eat the pickles can we do that all right so um, because Martha thought that she was the hero of the meal and Mary was doing nothing, that's when Jesus stepped in and said, well, <clears throat> if you want to know the truth, uh, actually Mary is doing the better thing, even though you're sweating and you're cutting the pickles in a decorative fashion and you're putting the frilly toothpicks in the sandwiches. Uh, we don't really need all that. So that's a lesson for today, but it's not the only lesson. I have more lessons. This is the next one. Immediately, I came to be in spirit, says John. We're still in chapter 4 and I'm in verse 2. We're analyzing the throne. The throne. Why does that matter, Martin? It's the throne of God. And lo, a throne located in heaven and on the throne one sitting. And he who is sitting is to sight like a jasper stone and a carnelian. He is like a jasper stone and a carnelian. We talked about that. And a rainbow surrounding the throne is to sight like an emerald. This is great. 
because the rainbow speaks of peace. It speaks of a covenant God made with humanity. And in his judgment, God always remembers mercy. God's judgment always holds a promise which will ensue of deliverance from the trouble and an aftermath of blessing, always. When I, think, when I say that word aftermath, I think of a tornado. And you see the tornado going through, and then the news cameras come on and they show you the aftermath of the tornado Harry. They never name tornadoes. They always name hurricanes. I think tornadoes should have name have names. The aftermath of tornado Harry. And then tornado Harry, of course, you see trailers uh, upturned, overturned, you see trees upended, you see cars, you see a disaster. The, it's the opposite of God. After his whirlwind goes through, you look back and behind you, it's almost like, remember those paint commercials where the paintbrush goes over and then in its wake, there's a sparkly little happiness and there's a new color. It's like magic. God's paintbrush goes through. And, and instead of leaving an aftermath of destruction, disaster, it's an aftermath of wonderment and uh, beauty and rebuilding and a new color. Speaking of new color, we're going to look at this emerald. So here's this rainbow and it hovers over the throne of God like a, like a halo or something. And it surrounds the throne as a promise of peace. Just remember this. In his wrath, God remembers mercy. So the rainbow surrounds it. In other words, the love of God surrounds everything. The promise of God for restoration and blessing surrounds it. It underlies everything he does, and it surrounds everything he does. And how cool that the rainbow is here on the eve of the great judgment of God. It's like the great white throne. I've always loved that too. When you get to the great white throne, we're going to do that in Revelation 20. It's white. People overlook these details, which are marvelous. It's a white throne. It's not a black throne. And even though we see a fiery God about to wreak indignation upon the earth, his throne is surrounded by a rainbow. What does that remind you of? I'm reminded of Genesis chapter 9. aren't I? Is this chapter 9? Yeah. Genesis 9, verse 9. No, let's go to verse 11. God said, Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a deluge, and never again shall there be a deluge to wreck the entire earth. That's comforting until we realize that he's not going to use fire next time. He's not going to use water next time. He's going to use fire. So it's like when God's ready to destroy the second earth, God, I thought you made a promise not to destroy the earth again. Ah, ah, I promise not to do it with water. I didn't say anything about fire. Uh, you're right. You got a point there. Elohim further said, verse 12 of Genesis 9, this is the sign of the covenant that I am giving between me and you and every living soul that was with you for Aeonian generations. Aeonian. And I believe this includes our generation. My bow have I set in a cloud, and it will be for a sign of the covenant between me and the earth, and it will occur when I make the sky cloudy over the earth with clouds, and my bow appears in the cloud. Then I will remember my covenant between me and you and every living soul among the flesh, so that never again shall the waters become a deluge to wreck all flesh. When my bow comes to be in the cloud, and I think this is interesting that you only see the rainbow when it's raining, right? It's the water. Uh, I don't know the science of it, the meteorology of it, but um, it's the sun shining through water, right? And you don't get water apart from clouds. So you never see the rainbow on a beautiful sunny day because we don't need it then because the day's already beautiful and sunny and everybody's happy. The butterflies are flitting about and the birds are singing. But during a thunderstorm, when everything's scary, I'm going to talk about thunder and lightning and voices tomorrow to end the week on a spooky note. Uh, no, it's as I'm saying here, that it's beautiful that the rainbow comes after the storm and even during the storm. It's one of those phenomena where you see where it's raining and sunny at the same time because it's a remembrance of God's mercy and his promise that he has a plan. So when my bow comes to be in the cloud, I will see it to remember the Aeonian covenant between Elohim and every living soul among all flesh, which is on the earth. So Elohim said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant. Okay, interesting. Now, Noah, he said it to who? 
No, not Jonah. Yes, Noah. I will go now to Matthew 24, verse 37. For even as the days of Noah, thus shall be the presence of the Son of Mankind. For as they were in those days before the deluge, masticating, concordant word there, chewing their food, and drinking and marrying and taking taking in marriage until the day on which Noah entered the ark, and did not know till the deluge came and takes them all away, thus shall be the presence of the Son of Mankind. And so we are visiting that time period here. And so how fitting it is that the rainbow would appear. I always liked Lucky Charms cereal because they all had the, the little marshmallows in there and they were all the color of the rainbow. And um, the marshmallows were in between these bits of oats. The oats were hard, crunchy things like cat food. And they were shaped like cat food, if my memory serves me. And the marshmallows were soft. And one was made of heart. One was a clover. One was a moon. And they were all very nice things in the midst of the hard cereal. So I see that as an analogy here, too. The, the rainbow comes in the midst of the hard things. And there, were all, there were, will always be, there will always be that sign. To Israel, we don't need a sign. But to Israel, they need a sign that in wrath, God remembers mercy. And th this is significant, too, that John says that a rainbow surrounding to the throne is to sight like an emerald. So this is not at all like the marshmallows in Lucky Charms. And it's not at all like the rainbow we know as today that's broken down into the primary colors. Red, blue, green, orange, yellow, indigo, and violet. It is as emerald. So it's green. It's a very soothing color. And yet the emerald, is that, that's what he said, isn't it? I'm not, yeah, the rainbow surrounding the throne is to sight like an emerald. So John's seeing some weird things here. A rainbow that looks like an emerald. Emerald is just as hard as the jasper and the carnelian stone. So this tells me that the promise of God for mercy in the midst of judgment is just as solid as the judgment. It's not like um, the 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 jasper and the carnelian are these hard things and the rainbow is made out of uh, the marshmallows in a bowl of Lucky Charms. That would tell me that the promise is mushy. The promise is soft. The promise is not as good as the judgment. But the emerald, like an emerald, is just as hard as these other stones. So it's just as sure. The promise is just as sure. God always brings Noah to the top of Mount Ararat. He always, he's going to bring his son to his right hand. He's going to bring Joseph to rulership in Egypt. He's going to bring Israel to Jerusalem to rule all the nations. And he's going to bring us to the highest heaven. He's going to complete what he started. The promises are just as sure as the judgments and the trials. And emerald is green and it's soothing to look upon. Deep purple, deep red. These are colors of judgment. Put them together, you have a flame of fire. And God is, uh, is a consuming fire. However, this emerald, I like it. Because it's a perfect color. It's soothing to the eye. So suddenly we have a rainbow that looks like an emerald. So bizarre, but so wonderful. It's soothing. It's calming. It's the color of green, the color of life, the color of grass, the color of the tree of life. So in all these symbolic things, we're seeing real promises. And the promise of deliverance, the promise of a good outcome, to these days of indignation is just as sure as the indignation itself. And when it's finished, it lasts a lot longer.